right, guys, welcome back. This is the Above Average FPL podcast. My name's Adam, and as always, joined by Baker. How you doing, mate? I'm good, mate. It's been a while. It has been eight days, two game weeks, but we're back. Uh, the lights are green. My arrow is not green. It's been three red arrows in a row now. Uh, lights are green. My lights are my, It is green. Mate, yeah. Oh, you had a good week, mate. This is what happens. I get rid of the Spurs boys and everything goes wrong. You get, you keep them, keep them in and, you know, you reap the rewards yeah. against bad teams. Yeah, it was, it was a weird old week, wasn't it? Where, like, if you, again, one of those ones where if you had, there was a couple of players that have been well-owned for a long time, like Watkins and, and Porro, that somehow are like less than 20% owned players now and had a good week. If you had one of those two this week, then... Then you are laughing. Or you had Kai Havertz. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who's now got something like eight returns in the last seven weeks? Yeah, we could need to talk five about goals, three habits. assists. <sighs> but then previously we were saying that he was just picking up these scraps at the end of massive, massive wins, and now he's just picking up everything. Yeah, it's it's a run. It's a serious run, though, isn't it? Like it's not. I you know it's the sort of run that leads you into a double game week and then he gets gets booked and then doesn't play in the second game type thing it's that kind yeah. of run yeah it's that, it's kind, that of. kind of run that's that's the kind of season that's the kind of season we've been in um but yeah no as i say red arrow for me not 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 ideal um i don't know i don't know how i'm feeling about it. i didn't really put too much thought into my transfer last week to be honest i kind of just just chucked in what felt like it was okay and basically did nothing. You know, last last few weeks, like my transfers the last few weeks have been an absolute disaster. And I know I'm talking to a guy who transferred about 14 injured players in in a row, but I just, it, I it, just feel like... It feels weeks. more when it's short though, doesn't it? When it's like three weeks, when there's like uh, three game weeks in a calendar week, right, and stuff goes wrong. Now there's always more chance that stuff goes wrong because... That quick rotation turnarounds and, and, games like that. Yeah, yeah. and all that stuff but Richards you brought in and no idea that he was going to be out and suddenly he's completely out oh yeah well, you, then, the, the decision making around that was like you know he seems pretty nailed and you went oh yeah he's played every minute since game week 14 okay yeah yeah that, that's that's nailed that works because yeah. it does right that's that does work and then, and then Vardy all this week with a with a nil pointer like that's that's harsh. That's harsh. I yeah. don't think it was. I don't think he is injured. I think he just said that because they've got the Madrid game tomorrow. But um, well, it's just stupid. Like, obviously, I bring Senesi and he gets injured. Then I bring Kirkes in, who plays all right, then gets subbed, and then misses yeah. the second game in a double free hit. Is the worst game week of all time. Then take Kirkes out for Richards, who concedes. Kirkes plays, keeps a clean sheet, gets subbed off, and then Bournemouth score. Bournemouth concede a goal, yeah. so he gets all the points. And then last week I take out Son and Watkins for Darwin and Salah, which is fine. Um, but at the same, and, and like Darwin's returned twice, but and obviously Son and Watkins have like last two weeks have been decent. Well, no, this week Watkins obviously decent. And then this yeah. week, like Doughty to Gavardiol, perfectly good. Like take out the Luton defender, bring in the Man City guy, comes in forty five minutes, booked. You send a message, he's been booked. Thanks, cheers. Like it's just like what the. Fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's not oh, like I was actually watching the game. I watched the ref go like this. I looked down at my phone. And he goes, "Vardy, I was booked." I was like, "Yeah, I've just seen that. <laughs> I just watched it on my screen." You bastard! I must. Be, I, I was sort of watching, but I sort of looked away and then looked up and saw him hold the yellow card up. <laughs> and I was like, "I just know who this is going to be for." I hadn't seen who done the challenge, and then I saw him just walking backwards, throwing his hand up. I was like, "Oh, oh. boy!" I mean, it is the season of just no defensive transfers. I just, just I wonder if we started the season. You know, remember there was the old, you know, Gabriel Saliba thing game week one. I wonder if we just gone the pair of them and just stuck with it and just not messed around with it. Thirty eight weeks. Well, 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 the I mean, they've kept like they've kept a ton of how, how many cleans have Arsenal kept? Sorry. I mean, even in the last few weeks, like the worst the worst thing about it, and this is like this is something that I still trying to get my head around is I just can't s see anybody scoring against them. Like I just don't see them conceding another goal for the rest of the season. Like no. I think we can, like I, I want to believe that Tottenham can beat them. Like I have to believe that. 
But at the same time, like, like, what, what, who's like, how are they going to concede a goal? I mean, they're already starting to filter now into this conversations about post game week thirty four. What do you do with Arsenal players? Because um, you know, a lot of people are wild card in, and if not, even if you're not wild card, a lot of people are bench boosting, obviously. Yeah. Um, but. <sighs> But this is yes. so, so. Let's just let's just let's, let's just contextualize this a little bit. So, we were chat. I was chatting in with a few guys doing the FPL challenge at, um, at the weekend, and obviously it was like the the double red thing for mm. Liverpool Man United players. And they were like, "Who should I get in? Who should I get in?" I went, "Well, I've gone with four Arsenal defenders because six points is what I expect, and then I expect goals in the Liverpool United game. So, like, I expected my double defenders to get two points, like both conceding, you know, one point minus one, whatever." And then my Arsenal defenders to all get six, and you know pretty much that's what happened. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think we're all going to get want to get seduced into all the doublers in the world, the bench boost. But if you look at Arsenal, that home to Bournemouth in thirty six and a, and home to Everton in thirty eight, yeah, they're not conceding. They're not conceding. Like <laughs> if you have one defender in that, you're going to lose. <laughs> but yeah. um, but the idea is, I'm suddenly like, yeah, I'm when I wild card, I'm probably going to keep one. I was going to say, uh, say, you think you think you'll lose only with one. And the reason I say mm. the reason I say that is if you looked, I mean, like, what's Watkins EO this week? Did you have a look? Yeah, six percent, six percent or something silly. Like they're, they're, those numbers will drop wild card. The wild cards will drop yeah. them for sure. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it. I'm, even on bench, boost, I don't care. I'm like, I'll just keep it. Um, yeah. We got a few. We got a few. Uh, a few in the chat. Let's say hello to a few in the chat, just because you know it's good to see people coming to join us. I was just, I had a little smile on my face there because I saw Redditor drop in, and uh, we were just looking at your tweet before uh, your reply yeah. to Baker in in Twitter with your ridiculous variance against the prime sample in the last few weeks. And I'm trying to, th- uh, you know, I'm, I saw that it made me sick. Genuinely <laughs> made me sick when must I'm looking at. It, mate. Well, when no, I look must at be Martin, Foden and Watkins, must be Foden and Watkins over the last two weeks. I mean, genuinely, when I look my, look at mine, I'm like 150 points behind the prime sample, like on variance. Yes. It's, yep. it's disgusting. If anyone doesn't know, our good friend Sarah out FPO optimized season highlights. I love the fact that he calls it season highlights. I'm like, mm, highlights. Is it highlights. Put your ID in and check uh, how you're doing versus the uh, average prime manager. If you if you're expected is above zero against prime managers, that's basically saying from expected decisions you played well i'm about i'm about minus one or minus two at fine. the moment it means you've played okay this season cool absolutely fine my you're, actual you're... number is about minus 125 yes yeah, painful <laughs> cheers thanks very much yeah it's painful that's <sighs> painful that's painful anyway anyway can we in the books oh alon's got us on as well on the podcast uh while, uh while he's at work so good to see you alon um yeah, no, while I, I mentioned the, the, the challenge, I wanted to just touch on the challenge because, yeah, we, we can get it out of the way. You know my feelings on the challenge. The challenge is not being played. The challenge is being played by me, though. And oh, there's a good, there's a good reason. Oh, check you out. This is, this is, there's 200 odd of us in our league, and I've been in the top 10 twice in the last two weeks. I'm number one in Vatican City. That's it. This week, oh. I'm number one in Vatican City. Um, You're living the dream. I'm not living in the Vatican City though, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So shout out to those in game week 31 and game week 32. Coaster for you, Nick Maslin. I did send a tweet, but if you see this, drop me a message. We'll get some coasters sent out to you and Shane O'Dowd um, and uh, and Richard. Uh, I can't actually read your surname off the screen here, but um, send me a message. I'll get coasters to you guys. 118 points this week, massive. Uh, good work. I thought I was smashing it with 108 points. I thought I was genuinely smashing it, and I've done done all right. Like top 10k in the world this week. Boom. So we'll take that. We'll take that. Um, but let's go over to your game week, mate. Let's have a look at your game week because you've had a good game week. We have. I can't remember how many points it was. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Sorry. Man. You know about it? I like 74. 74. Like yeah. No, it was 74. Yeah, seventy four, and really, in terms of like full blank, Dom Solanke was my only real blanker. Um, you know, netto four points. Isn't it's quite, not quite a return, but it, it's better than nothing. It's some honest work. But <laughs> then, obviously, Poro and the two 
Arsenal defenders, Gabriel Saliba, Saka, Salah, Palmer, Son, all return in, Haaland and Darwin, all return. So, yeah, I didn't have any auto subs. I ummed and all week over Gusto and Saliba, and it wouldn't didn't really matter in the end of the part about <laughs> Saliba or whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's that's me with a roll. With a really. roll? Yeah, that's good, yeah. man. You went up you yes, went up like thirty five thousand places up to hundred and fifteen K. Yeah. Good position good. to be in. Bench boost, yeah. wild card still in hand? Yep. Yeah. Beautiful. So yeah, it's um it looks looks in a in a really good place for me to keep attacking the next few weeks. So who knows? Nice, mate. Nice. I'm I'm beyond I'm beyond trying to get um being pissed off that you're ahead of me, to be honest, because I'm so far behind it's it's a joke. Um, so I had 58 points. Uh, as I mentioned already, I did Doughty to Vardiol for zero points. Van Dyke got me one point for Gusto auto sub. Perfect. Although to be fair, like Chelsea weren't much better. Um, obviously the double Arsenal defense, Ryan and Gabriel, six points each. Kept Madison. <laughs> I mean, he's got to go really. And I know I'm looking at two doubles, a double coming up, but with the blank and stuff, I mean, I think he's got to be the make way. Palmer returned, Salah returned, Saka um, obviously gets his pen as well, takes a couple of bonus with him, and uh, Darwin, Harlan, Solanke, same as you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, it, it felt like it was an okay week, but actually, in reality, it, it wasn't. Like, the average the average globally was 56. If you're only a couple of, above, couple of points above the average there, like, it's poor, right? You're just getting red arrows. You need to be beating that by five, ten points. I was a uh, goalkeeper in the uh, SKLW uh, tournament. How, how did you get on in that this week? I was, I was a striker. <laughs> who, was you, who, who, who was you up against? I was up against you. Yes! Son yeah. of a gun. Sneaking yeah. home the win. You won 3-1 three, three on aggregate, wasn't it? Was it 3-1, was it? Yeah, because we won the first one 1-0. And, and then you won, you won this one 3-0. I told Greyhead, like Greyhead, if you're watching me, I, t- I told you, like always bench Adam is like the, is it was the mantra. You can imagine for me, I'm always squad. Like, so <laughs> yeah. when I was told I was, oh, mate, I was yeah. like, don't do that. I am, I am your squad nerd. I am your full squad nerd. Well, it was like, just a case of like, who's, well, he just said, who's captain in Palmer. I was like, I'm captain in yeah. Palmer, not taking a hit. <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was a decision made. And then, yeah. Hmm. Come you Spurs says uh, the Madness performance was a bit of a punch in the stomach. Matters well. Oh right, yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Nice, nice. Nice. I like it, I like it, I like it, I like it. Um, what game do you want to do? Say again. What game we do? Uh, what game do you, what game do you want to do? Hold on, have I missed anything? Da, 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 da. No, I haven't missed anything. We'll just start at the beginning. Seeing as Alon's watching, and he's got to talk to Walsh later. <laughs> <laughs> oh mate, if if anyone watches this, you're not going to watch FML this week to see Walsh talk about Kevin. Then what are you doing? Yeah, man. Like, um, oh, sexy he's Kev. Just... Yeah, I mean he's I mean, he's looking old though, isn't he? Now I feel like he's just looking yeah. old now. He's saying he loves it. Obviously, he scores his hundredth goal or whatever it was. Um, proper postage stamp. Finish that first one to get things going. Well, to get back into the they game, I should it. say. They needed but, it. I mean, there was the biggest difference watching Arsenal versus watching City in the fourth this week was that these teams are giving people chances. Like, they, they are, whereas Arsenal are just not. They're just eliminating it. And it's... When you watch... When you watch the Saliba and Gabriel, just, just how much it means it. And then I watch... Like, I... <laughs> I just think Ruben Diaz is just one of the worst defenders I've ever seen in my entire life. And I felt that way for about three years. Um, well, his first season, he was good. First, but I, I still always put that on John Stones. But last season, he was abysmal. This season is abysmal. Pep, no, I think I'm sure, I'm sure Pep knows it because, like I said, the game at Anfield, the second he had a chance that Stones was back, it was like, yes, get Diaz out of the team. But when he plays, it's just, he doesn't man mark and he's so slow. Like, if you're going to play a high line and go at it, your defenders need to be so physically aggressive. Like we see at Tottenham, Dragosin's a good defender. Yeah. So yeah. May, maybe I'm being harsh on Diaz because maybe it's a little bit the system is 
tough for anyone to play. When we don't have Van de Ven, you go to Dragos in, it looks it looks horrendous because we leave him so exposed. It needs, if you're going to play that way, you need to have a really good partnership of a left and a right centre back and you know exactly what it is. And those players need to be so physically able. But if, they also, I mean, like missing missing Walker, I mean, you do you do lose that pace, right? So you lose covers. That, yeah, the so many times. Cover. You see, yeah, people talk about how sometimes he's like not the best attacking option or whatever. As if you know, from an FPL mindset, you're like, he's not a great attacking option. No, no, no. That's because he's covering the slow centre backs. Um, he's getting round the back to cover and sweep and all do do all this um, recovery work. He's so good at it, and because he's because he's, so he's still so quick. And you're right, yeah, you know, putting the Van der Ven comparison in there is perfect because you know, you just that pace, that raw pace that that Mickey's got is just is just mad. Yeah. And being able to go sideways, like, 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 so, so the fact is, is when you go outside him, it's like, well, that's me stuffed. Like, yeah. um, so they, it just, everything screams to me. You're like, you should be playing party old left center back, really, because then you use his absolute raw pace on it and stick it wherever you like a left back. You could stick Grealish at left back. It'd be all right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's just stupid. This thing that they're doing it because that could have been worse. You know, I think it should have been I mean, penalty. It could have... Yeah. Party, I'll just oh, yeah, through. God, yeah. Didn't just, play the ball just, in any just way. Him over. Just bowled him over completely. They, they were but, just... Still, I mean, like, <laughs> what, did, what did I message you um, about two minutes before Haaland scored? You can't sell Haaland. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I see if I can find the conversation because it was it was yeah. so it was so typical. We did that. I think was the um, mm. was the yeah. I just went Goodbye. might just bin Harlan to be honest, and you went praying Harlan misses out next week and I'll bin for Mateta. It's things I didn't think I'd say, and then yeah. immediately scores. And immediately, immediately scores, scores. Gets two bonus for one goal well, in a four-two loss. But he didn't really do anything. That was the thing That's because why. he did nothing. That's bad. The fact that he got bonus is bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Yeah, it means you know he's I mean? not Everyone... getting. It's not getting the chances. Yeah. Everyone moans and they say, "Oh, when when Darwin scores, he doesn't get the bonus." You're like, mm. but that does mean that he's at least doing something. Yeah, is yeah. Alan did nothing. So, look, we'll know. See, tomorrow night is the Madrid game, so we'll know yeah. where that sits. We should. I think there's a very good chance we'll get some information Saturday morning around what that city lineup is going to be. Um, but you need a plan. Everyone needs a plan. Um, it's tough if you're free hitting, I think, in some ways, because you, you wouldn't really want to take Haaland out for one week, then you free hit, and then... And then you only have one uh, transfer to resolve things. Yeah, yeah. If you need unless you're get... free hitting and wild carding. Yeah. If you're wild carding, it's a, it's a really easy decision to get rid because it's one game away to Brighton versus you're going to have a doubler. You can have the marvellous yeah. Mateta. Um, if you're not wild carding or you've already wild carded and you haven't got free here. Well, tough. yeah, tough. Tough, but if he's not starting, I'll bin him this week. Like if he if he doesn't start this week, I'll just bin him because yeah. I don't really care and I, now. Because I think there's also that conversation the other side of do you want Salah and Harland? You yeah. know, for someone like yourself who's potentially going to go for a while and chase for a bit, like Harland in say 30, 36 against Spurs, <laughs> like could be like a captain that that. Nobody else has. Hit a game in 35 um, away at West Ham, for example. I mean, there's a double, so it's difficult. Um, but like, I don't see a way that I end up with Salah ever again after 34. Um, even with that last game of the season, home to Wolves, I don't see a way that it happens. Um, so I think you can sell Holland if you want to put your eggs in the Salah boat. Um or the Kev boat. Yeah. I don't mind that. Yeah, there I don't, could be a world. I don't mind there could that. be a world where we get a league that Kev plays and Harlan doesn't. And then is Kev 
the best captain next game week. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. I don't know. But I think so much of City is going to just depend on um, what kind of leaks we get. Other than that, you just, you just, you just sit and wait on them. Um, anything on Palace apart from Mateta? I mean, uh, obviously, Elise back as well. Interesting, but probably just Eze anyway, because of pens. Yeah. But Eze off on 64 minutes because oh, yeah. it was crap. Yeah, it's not helpful. It's not helpful that he goes off. Um, but I guess, you know, what we don't know is, does he go off because it's playing Man City? So they've almost gone, well, this isn't the game for him. I'm going to preserve him. I'm going to be okay. And if we just get, because they're only five points off relegation now. You know, they've been helped today with a bit of Everton lost points. Um, but obviously, you know, they've now got that, that next game. They lose against Liverpool as well. Now, they're quite fortunate. Obviously, Luton have got Man City, so that's not so good for them. Everton are away at Bournemouth, so potentially not the greatest. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, it's... Everton away at Chelsea. Everton away at Chelsea, sorry. Yeah. Everton away at Chelsea. Um, so it's not great fixtures all around for the teams around them. But, I mean, that double suddenly becomes really, really important for them. Two home games to try and get some stuff, points from it. Um, but, yeah, as I now I'm like, hmm, mm, I don't know. And I don't know how much of a read we're going to get this weekend from Palace because of their plan against another really tough team. Are they? Uh, playing Liverpool this weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. I was getting confused again then with uh, with Everton, yeah. Sorry, I thought yeah. they were playing Chelsea then for a second, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, another tough team. It's re- it's so hard to take to take stuff from these these kind of games other yeah. than other than so the strikers have scored goals, right? They've Strike created a big goals. chance. They've created a big chance. They've had a big chance each and they've converted a big chance each. Yeah. And Which is good. The Eze narrative changes completely if that penalty is given and he scores it. Very true. Yeah, very Complain- true. Changes completely. Yeah. Changes completely. Um, Anything else on these yeah. boys or are we moving on? No, nah, move on. Okay. Villa 3, Brentford 3. As you take a sip of whiskey. XG in this game? Yeah, 1.2 for Villa, 1.38 for Brentford. Good finishes. Bad Big keepers. Good finishes. Bad keepers. Bad keepers. Although, yeah, I wouldn't call Martinez a bad keeper, but Flecken, yeah. They've not been good at keeping clean sheets, though, this season, all season. It's been, it's been a rarity for both these teams. Continued to be a rarity for both these teams, but... Yeah, some mad goals. Reggie gets a haul, despite them conceding three goals. <laughs> he gets two <clears throat> assists. So, I mean, yeah, that was a crazy, it was a crazy 15 or 10 minutes, wasn't it, from Brentford there? Like just mad. absolutely out, out of nowhere. And I've said it before, like, where, where was this Region when we had him? Like, where, where was this guy? Is he on loan there still? I think he is on loan. Can we get him back? Can because we... because he's kind of doing what Werner's doing almost, right? And that's kind of where I don't know. Let's get, let's get anyway. back. Um Watkins still good, obviously. <laughs> Interesting this though, isn't it? Because uh, like, is there anything that says to you don't play double defense for Arsenal this week? Home to Villa when they've just scored three and they got Watkins. No, still play double defense. Just to play double, and I'm I'm in the same boat because no Doug, yeah, no Doug. It's, it's good, isn't it? Just just double defense, Arsenal. Yeah, no, agreed. Um, I mean, do you want to sell Watkins now? I mean, should you be selling Watkins now if you still have him? I I don't know many strikers. When I look at it, and I think, like in 34, home to Bournemouth. 35 home, home to, to Chelsea. Chelsea. They're two fantastic fixtures. Yeah, then away to Brighton, which I still think is fine. Yeah. And then you last couple, then, you, then you're in double season. You're yeah, in more four, doubles there nice. anyway. So it's and just kind of just The good gone. thing about him is you can always go. Like you can always go to anyone else because he's 
basically the highest price striker bar Haaland that you're going to have. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think I would be tempted to keep him for the next couple and then look at Newcastle for Isak in 35. I think that makes that sensible move. You still got him. That's, that's probably the place where I would go. Uh, Brentford. No, I mean, nicely boomer back. No, but the fixtures are good. Yeah, okay. And they're solid for a long time. Uh, Bumo, slightly curious. The Tony thing, they're missing out and stuff. They're managing things, but I'm hopeful. It's all a bit weird. Um, it's all a bit weird. Would I, I sell agree. Tony? You can't sell him this weekend. He's home to Sheffield United. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very true. There'll be some one-week punters. If there are people that are free hitting in 34. Wildcard 35. Wildcard 35. Tony, Bumo, Tony, definite worth. Well, even Reggie, if you needed a one week defender, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's probably there's still the place where I'd look for the punt. Uh, I say that. Would I do that over? I got a leak that said this player's playing for Man City at home to Luton. I'll do that one. Yeah, <laughs> like that feels like a Doku game. That feels like a Doku game. Yeah, but he's pretty, I mean, mate. To be fair. No game has been a Doku game since it was a Doku game. Like since it's game true. week eleven, he's been absolutely really dog true. shit. Like he's literally done nothing. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's just Fast. that one week that derailed yeah. my entire season. Yep. Moving on. There it is. What else we got? Saturdays. The most comical goal you'll see all weekend. In probably one of the worst games you'll see this weekend. I don't want to take anything from this game, to be honest, because we're not picking either of the players. I mean, I know that Everton have got double. Don't, don't. Oh, you're going, you're going defender, are you? Mm-hmm. You're going DCL? So, so I need, potentially, potentially, let's say Haaland doesn't play next weekend. I'm going to do, I would do Haaland out. And my choice is a Mateta. Yeah. And whoever I pick, I won't play in 33. I'll just play him in 34 because I'll just play Garnacho against uh, Bournemouth. Yeah. And then play them in 34. But my options are DCL with uh, Forest and Liverpool. Home, Forest, home of Liverpool. Yeah. Mateta. West who's Ham and got Newcastle. Home West Ham, home Newcastle. Or Kuna. Home Arsenal, home Bournemouth. I can't trust Kuna's minutes, I don't think. I'm not going to do that. I don't think. I'd Matessa almost prefer. I'd, I'd almost prefer McBurney to be honest. Oh, or McBurney. I'd, pr- I'd yeah. like at those four. I'd probably prefer home Burnley away Man United. <laughs> 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 that feels. That feels like loads of fun. Brereton Diaz. Can you imagine? Can, Brereton Diaz. Yeah. Like, can you imagine? Can you imagine like three returns in that week? At zero percent owned, zero percent owned. It's going to be an absolute monster. That'd be that'd be the best week. But yeah, I mean, you will have some. No, you're not even going to have any free hitters. Free hitters aren't even going to bother. No, 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 no. They don't this bother is, with that crap. This is mad scraps. This is mad scraps. But I did think it's funny in it because when um when you're potentially shopping in that market, you look at it and you look for like glints, don't you, and stuff. That's why the eye test is. A disaster so often for people like us is that we look at them like wow that looked that look prime dcl that looked prime dcl wasn't it it was a bit nifty a bit doing this a bit, doing, a bit moving around maybe pro- that's the way the problem the problem with dcl is he's still running so back when we had that Kane son season and dcl had like he scored like 15 16 goals like he was good yeah. the problem is he still yeah. thinks he's that guy so he gets into positions where he should pass and he shoots Right, and like Ian Wright, Ian Wright and whatever match of the day is like, oh, he's good, he's getting his confidence up. Bullshit, he needs to do what's right for the team in, the, in a lot of these situations where he's shooting and he's definitely not the right person to shoot. Like, he needs, yeah. to, he needs to find a And pass. he hasn't, he hasn't played two games. Like, he has played either like 20 minutes or 80 minutes, 20 minutes or 80 minutes, 20 minutes or 80. So you're going to double, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm just going to get 100 minutes. Would I want 100 minutes of DCL or 90 minutes of Haaland? I'm like, no, oh, 90 minutes of Haaland. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, don't get me, don't yeah. get me wrong. I mean, obviously, obviously, like the, the way that Burnley play out of the back is, uh, it, 
you know, for them, I guess specifically, it's a weakness. Miric was, you know, Calvert Lewin obviously closes him down, Rubbish. and yeah, it's just bad goalkeeping. But yeah, yeah, he's got. I mean, if he wants to come back to any kind of level, he needs to be a better player. Like Everton need him to be a better player, man, because this could have been another two two xg game and probably yeah. three nil if he'd have passed a couple of opportunities on. Yeah, when he shoots. But yeah, yeah, it's right. Like, would I be considering him if he hadn't scored a goal that got whacked against him? And I mean, Dub was terrible for the penalty midweek as well. Mm. Yeah, but he, he shouldn't have had either of them. Um, but yeah, and then defense, tar like it's Tarko versus Munoz at Palace versus Aignori. Yeah, so Wolves. Here we go. Uh, when did Wolves play? Because I've got them in like fixed order. Yeah, they yeah, did, but I've got them in fixed order. So they're what? They must be fixed just six, I think. Hold on. Did I do that one? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, what, like, where, Ain't where is, just... where is he playing? Insane. Where's he playing? <laughs> <laughs> well, we looked. We, we, we did look. We did look at we did look at and where he's playing. Obviously, this did, is because it was like. I mean, this is a game of two. Let's just let's put this out there straight away. So, Wolves picked up one point five xg. West Ham one point one six. Both of them had a point eight xg penalty in there. So it's basically point seven against point three five. And the game was basically listening to War Prowse. The game was basically decided by the wind. Did you even even say yeah. in the comments? Basically, it sounded like a you know like a like a proper like a Sunday league. game. Yeah, Sunday league's game. Sunday, oh, Sunday mate, league. Up. Yeah. Kick up hill, kick up hill first, and then so I'll second half downhill the with the wind. And this is exactly how the XG played out, literally like an eight, eight year old game. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's exactly like that. It is. Wolves we'll get is. it all We've in the first this. half, and West Ham get it all in the. It's exactly yeah. like that. That's bizarre. I didn't and other than that, that, two really weird goal disallowed. Like, I mean that. <laughs> I didn't see anything that managed to get in zoom in quick enough to see whether Emerson stood on his foot or whatever, but that's weak as hell. That yeah. that one, and then and then the Kilman one. The ball's in the goal. <laughs> it's not offside. He's not like oh the bloke's in the way of the keeper. It's like well yeah he is standing there. But I I never. Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit indifferent on that one. I mean, I understand why it's given, right? That's the problem is I understand why it's given. And I think anyone who's looking at it actually understands why it's given, obviously, maybe apart from Gary O'Neill. But um, it's just, it, yeah, it's just crap because, you know, he's right in saying like, like Fabianski's view is not impaired because really, you know, the ball's above everyone's head anyway. But if you're going to, if you're going to develop a set piece where that kind of happens, why don't why doesn't the guy at the front in front of the keeper just duck right at the last second? Like like <laughs> gen genuinely. Like like with a second like just as it's coming to his head, duck. You're gonna surprise the keeper because he's gonna go, oh shit, what happened? And ha ha when VAR looks at it, the guy's got his head between his knees. And it's like, well, he can't clearly clearly not block in the view of the keeper if his head's yeah. like Yeah, it, uh, why why wouldn't you do that? Just as a thought. Above for... average set piece coaching available. <laughs> yeah. For contract. <laughs> <laughs> Inquiries at just above. Yeah. So like, it's so, it's so stupid. Like it's yeah. one of those things. Like, If you're going to put yourself in a position where something could be given like that, then don't really, I mean, you can be angry, but yeah. don't really get to be too surprised when it's actually bloody given. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> like, it's just, it's yeah, just yeah. one of those things. Yeah, it is. Um, War Prowse is, I mean, yeah, the wind helps, but he's just phenomenal. Just love it. I'm glad he scored one from a corner, to be fair. I feel I feel like that was kind of like it's like a bucket list thing for him. Yeah, does that go on it? You know, his list of because it's free kick goals, they call it, don't they? They don't call it set piece goals. It'd be free kick goal, well, no, it won't be a free kick goal. Don't they call them set piece goals. They no, no, it'd free be free kick goals. Free still kick behind goals. still behind Beckham or something like that? Like a one behind him or I think it might be level. I can't even remember now. Someone can let us know. Comments or something. And talking of comments and stuff like that, if you haven't hit like yet, hit like on the video. And if you want to hit see like more from us, hit subscribe and all that good, good stuff. So um, people shopping for a cheap defender. You've got Taco Brown, right? Oh, oh, Dull as hell. 
but probably the best fixtures. Or you've got well, or you've got the left back, right midfield, centre midfield, left forward, Ryan Ain't Nori. Yeah. Shall I just bring up the past? Shall I just bring up the map? Bring up the past map because we looked at it. We looked at it early and we were trying to work the out where map. he's playing. <laughs> just trying to work it out because there was one and they showed this one quite clearly on match of the day there's one where he started basically in the right of the center circle and he just ran a complete diagonal line to the left led f the uh, edge of the left side of the box and no one touched him and just like absolutely just let him run in that corner so god knows what he's doing picking up the ball in there unless it's i couldn't remember whether it came from a set piece or something but i think the important thing here He's obviously he's just ridiculously attacking, and he's you can see all yeah. those spots in the box as well. I mean, you just don't get like there's more spots in the opponent's box than there is in his, there is in his box. That is exactly right. Yeah, right? it's really easy. And to wolves get aren't a fantastic defence. Yeah, really easy to get distracted by the reds that almost look like if you just contact the reds, you look. Oh, I've got a guy that doesn't really overlap, doesn't really get down right down on the wing and stuff, and it's because he it, it actually just leaves his position at that point. And then it becomes real sporadic. It gets like two thirds of the way down. And it's the little bits. It's the little ones that you're looking for. Um, and all those touches in a, you know, in the box. They're not even really around the box. They're in the box. There's a few in the six yard box there and everything. Although he's yeah. missed chances in there. They're, they're missed chances. It's just, um, this is fun. And you've got good fixtures here. So, He's, you know, he's a good play this weekend away. I think he'd be fine. I think he'd be fine by the sounds of the comments. Sounded like it was really precautionary. Um, but the great part of this one, he's playable in 35, home to Luton. Yeah. It, he's also playable on bench boost, home to Palace. In 37. Would, uh, yeah, in 37. Yeah. So if you're bench boosting in 37, I'd have no issue with getting him in. And then saying, right, he's part of my bench boost at home to Palace in 37. And you just bench him in 36 and 38 when he's got City and Liverpool. Yeah, seems seems fair enough. In terms of defenders, if you're going to bring him in, especially, so if you're not, if you're wild carding, he's a great bring in because these next few weeks are fantastic. If you're not wild carding, he's fantastic because he's got really good fixtures and then really obviously playable ones and he's, cheap in you know and you can just bench him in the other ones um and if you're free hitting he's good too <laughs> compared to we sort of looked at munoz which seems like the other opportunity um and i say we've already spoken about palace haven't we so yeah probably can talk about munoz here yeah one is will palace keep any cleans secondly bar the double you don't want to bar them you know their best games are away from home yeah. Um, the, it, it's the bit that you mentioned as well these little touches right so again just mentioning that like more touches in his own box than in the opponent's box yeah so just and I think little bits when like I that. watch him I, I see him in the box quite a lot I see him hanging around in there but the difference is is that there's other guys that can score there is actually other guys you know and as Elise comes in you know it'll take more and more away from him um Plus you've got Eze, plus you've got Mateta. Like he doesn't need to necessarily be the person that does it. He just needs to be the person that takes care of that side for him. Um, well, especially if you think of like as well with with Ain't Nori, right? Without Huang and uh, and Neto, they're really kind of just you know, yeah, they're just vying for additional attacking threat. He's fine. He's fine. Um, and I do think they'll want to try and grind some results out of that West Ham and Newcastle. But I would still expect West Ham and Newcastle to score. Yeah. Um, I know he's the fun. Just, I mean, he's, he's going to the, be ridiculously that's highly owned. That's that's, that's a, the way to go. Almost a fact. That's the way to go. Um, so we, Saturday's done. No, awesome. mate. <laughs> Saturday's done. No, we've still got three games to do on Saturday. How many games are on Saturday? Seven. We've only done four games. So we've got this game. If you want to talk about this game at all, nothing really much happened here, I guess. Well, Newcastle got bullied. Yeah. And got away with a 1 0 win. Yeah, basically, I guess. But I don't know. This, If you think about last season, like how much of this attack revolved around get the ball to Kieran Trippier, spam the ball into the box. That was 
99% of what it is, you know, is, is, and when you've got such an efficient way of working, it doesn't expose any of the, anything else, any of the detriments of the staff, the left fallback doesn't have to do anything because it's really just tucking in. So you can just keep pushing it there and he just keeps putting it in, putting it in. When you take that away, the whole rest of it was like, oh, it's just a lot of average. I you think, know. yeah, but at the same, it's not just the trips injuries, right, that is causing them the, them the problem. I mean, having Tenali out for his own reasons yeah. and having Joe Linton out, who's dry, like drives everything. Joe Linton's a and big, big call. Wilson's also a big one because you, you know, just from a minutes perspective, you know, getting rid of some of the minutes for Isak and getting Wilson coming in, like he hogs chances like anything. Like he's doing, yeah. he does what Calvert Lewin seems to be doing right now, except he finishes. Yeah. So and don't forget, obviously, when they, when yeah, Wilson's fit, they also have the option they could just play Isak wide, like because he's that he's that good, he can play, you know, across it. But um, injuries have have killed him. I do think, you know, Fulham have still just beaten him up in that first half hour. They've done what they did against us. They they you know they beat us up. So it's there's no there's no shame in it. Um, obviously, no Gordon as well. No Gordon played. Gordon's good. Did he? Yeah, Gordon's good. Gordon was the shining light, you know, um, nice. uh, of goodness. Um, he, he had, you know, some snatch chances. He was all right. Gordon's actually comp said it on the pod that I reckon he just got that red card on purpose. And I reckon he did because he's now, he's now oh, not going to get a yeah, get a back. I, I completely, yeah, I completely forgot the midweek game then for a second. I was just, I'm sure he was banned. I was just looking back <coughs> to think, think what yeah, happened. No, yeah, no, no, he no. missed the midweek game. Sorry. Yes. So he's got away with it. He's got away with the ten, yeah. ten card ban. Not going to happen. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Gordon's good to go. Gordon, everything good still looks Gordon esque. You know, I think I think Gordon's a is a really good move. Thirty five. Um. If you're Newcastle, you just want to get back home. You know, and um, the game against Tottenham, it should be a good game for it the likes of Isak and Gordon, we give up chances to wingers and strikers. So if you've got those ones, you play them this week. Yeah. Um, but other than that, you can just leave these alone until 35. But they're definitely on the menu for 35. Luton and Bournemouth. I can't wait to get rid of Bournemouth. Can you tell me who that player is? I cannot tell you that player. Would you? <laughs> anyone? Can anybody tell me who that player is? Anyone in the comments? Uh, we'll let we'll player? let we'll let them work it out. <laughs> this is as soon as I put his picture up there, I was like, Baker's going to have no idea who he is. It's not Luke Berry, is it? That's it's not Luke Berry. No, it's not Luke Berry. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. That's amazing. I have zero um, idea. Oh, it's Clark. It's got to be Clark. Yes, it's the same. his name's on the Clark, screen. Scored. His name's Clark, on scored. the screen. Uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, Jordan Clark. Anyway, um, you can't wait to get rid of Bournemouth. You're just desperate to get. Rid of them. I cannot wait to get rid of them. It's like oh, it's almost why I want a bench boost in 34. Just to, like that's the last game I have to play Neto in forever, and I can just I can't move wait. on and. Just get them out of the team. Just stinky, stinky but they, Bournemouth. They do, they do it though. They get like they they'll do like three or four. They'll go like three or four games where they'll be like, oh, actually, Bournemouth look all right here. You know, oh, doubles coming up. This is nice. You know, we'll, we'll start getting. Oh, who can we get in? Well, obviously, Solanke, and you know, we want a defender. And is it going to be Tav or is it is it is it Cliver? Who do we want? And then they just, as you say, they just stink it up for like five games in a row. Stink it. up. And we're just least... like, what the hell are we doing? Yeah, at least with Neto, you're going to get some saves because they're so crap. <laughs> um, but I just, I just don't like it, you know. And Solanke, obviously, Solanke, like his shot volume's falling through the floor, but it's because their shot volume's falling through the floor. Like everything's reliant on them, but he's not the sort of person that's going to make it on his own. He needs feeders. Tav studies hamstring, so their yeah. most creative, most electric player done. I see him out of the double. Yeah. So, I think, you, I think you just roll with what you've got, right? Just roll with what you've got if you've got them, and then just yeah. And and they've got Man United this weekend at home, and Man United are conceding about fifteen shots a game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you, you, you just got to play him because he's playing against 
that. Um, but and I don't mind, you know, I, I, well, I assume I'm going to play Neto this week. Well, Farry Holder's back. I might play him at home to Fulham. But, um, yeah, it is, it's a little stinky. It's a little stinky from Bournemouth right now. Um, and, yeah, I don't, I, the quicker I can get rid of it, I think everyone would, you know, Again, Solanke to Isak in 35 is like the easiest. So everyone's going to try and look at other moves, but Solanke to... I would go Solanke to... E, if you're not well and I'll go Solanke to Isak over any of them. And just, well, you could um, almost just get that done now, couldn't you? Yeah. And, or, you know, I think even Solanke to Hoyland could be quite popular in 35 if you already got Isak. Why'd you do it in 30? I mean... Again, why would you do it? Well, why would you do it in thirty-five? Would you prefer Hoyland once against Sheffield United, or would you prefer would you prefer Solanke twice against Villa and Wolves away? Like, I mean, you could you could make that you move. Could. I just think there's so many other moves you can do that it's it's a difficult one to do. But okay. it's it's a move. It's a move. Like it, like it is. There is there is a decision <laughs> yeah. to be made there. Um, you just I always think with strikers like. Appearance points. Appearance points are useful strikers because it's like half a goal. Mm. Yes. It's like half although, a goal. Y- yes. Although I would say for most middling strikers, let's not confuse this with, with our Harlands and Darwins, is normally a goal comes with bonus as well. So it's not yeah. really half a goal. It's like a third of a goal because it it's is, normally but, two bonus. But then two games, if you get one goal in each, like if you get one goal in each game, it's so much more than a brace. Yes. You get, like, you get bonus you get double twice. bonus, yeah. Yeah, Four, so, so the whole point of like taking 16. out a Dublin striker. Yeah. That's why a Dublin striker's good. That's why I like, you know, for a moment, I'm looking at like, I'd love to be able to do Mateta rather than Eze, for example. Um, or even DCL, because I'm like, well, who else is going to get the bonus? <laughs> well, in, um, in, in the Liverpool game, everyone, everyone in a red shirt is oh, going to yeah. get the bonus. Yes. Good point. Good point. Well made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. Right. Let's move on from, from from these four games to go. We've got to talk. We. I mean, we've spoken about them um, already. But yeah, Arsenal three, Brighton nil. Um, XG reflects exactly that. They bashed them. Yeah. I suppose we haven't really talked about. We talked a few bits about decisions. What was your What's your take on the Saka penalty? Oh, I just thought it was stupid. I just thought it was stupid from Lamptey. So I, I, I guess because my initial opinion was stupid, I then didn't dissect it. I didn't give it. I didn't like, I, was, I, I didn't have a care for, God, this makes me sound like I've just become more FPL than just football. <laughs> because because my brain should be like, that's not a penalty. <laughs> um, which I think is probably more, more where you were in that yeah. sense. But my brain was like, well, that was stupid. Um, and then, so I didn't spend time thinking, oh, did he get the ball first and stuff like that? Because I don't, I don't really count touch a ball, touch on the ball as getting the ball. I just think that's just, that doesn't matter. He, he I, don't, I don't know. If a keeper, it. if a keeper gets like, if keeper, if it flicks off a keeper's edge right, of his finger, does he make a save? Yeah, but I don't. I don't necessarily. I don't. I personally, I don't interpret keepers versus defenders the same. Way. I mean, obviously, it's just, yeah. Obviously, it's a it's a very abstract and stupid comparison. I get that, but yeah. like, when does when does one thing become one thing and the other thing not become another thing? Why is why is why is a touch on the ball not a one tackle when I, like a I shot just that's think... just inside the post is like it's on target, so it's on target, and like everything yeah. else, everything else is binary like that. But the tackle is not. So, like, why? Why is the... Like, offsides are binary, right? But the yeah, tackle but, is but not. But they're also binary on VAR, whereas these aren't. So they're subjective in game and subject. So the subjective... I don't call... mind. I don't mind that the penalty was given, right? Yeah. And I don't, and I don't mind... And I, and I don't mind... Because it looks like a pen, right? It's the first thing I see is a pen. But when you see the defender take the ball... Like, I don't... Look, it's a small touch, Okay. Win touch, yeah. win ball versus touch ball, whatever. But like, if a defender gets a touch on the ball, it's a it's 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 a tackle, right? Like it's 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 a tackle. Like the and contact being made after defender makes challenge on ball is what happens in a game of football. Mm. It's it's I, one of those where it's really it's, frustrating. It's 
clarity of rules to an extent. Oh, it's well. bullshit. Yeah, because because if if what should happen is if he touches the ball first, therefore he's cleared the ball, and therefore he then has then then taken the man. Then it's like, well, if the rule is that that's not a penalty, then the purpose of VAR should be to say, ah. Oh, I don't know if you knew this, Mr. Ref, but there was a little touch on the ball before he touched him. Does that change your decision? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think that's what the conversation has. I think the conversation is, is he's taking him out, looks at pen, he gives the pen, and then I don't think they're trying to be clever to try and say, actually, that's it. I think they're just saying, have you made a clear and obvious error, Mr. Ref? And the answer is not really. Yeah. Um, and so then they just give it. What I would like to have seen is if they hadn't have given it, then for the ref well i don't exactly i don't think i don't think it gets given how could the ref have this is where the thing is stupid the way we use technology is because surely the benefit of technology is that it can see things that the ref can't it gives extra eyes therefore the clear and obvious thing is stupid because there's no way on earth that the ref could see there was a tiny touch on the ball first yeah so there's no way on earth that the ref's ever going to do a decision other than penalty. So therefore, there's no way on earth it ever ends in saying that's not a penalty. So yeah. then you're like, what's the point in looking at it if you're not going to turn it over in the first place? So it's all a nonsense. But I was just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. No, fair enough. No, fair enough. I'm I'm, I'm cool with that. Um... You've got to you've got to be considering Havertz for free here, haven't you? You've got to be considering Havertz for free here. I think he's. Yeah, legitimately, legitimately an option. Like Saka, but, like Saka does nothing in this game apart from score the pen, right? And that's the next question, because that's an interesting take. Because I think everyone who's looking at Havertz is like Saka, Havertz, and defender. There but that is... sounded to me like the person that was saying, "Well, double defense is just mandatory because they're so ridiculous." And the sec, then you pick one attacker, and maybe the attacker is Havertz over Saka. I, I don't I can't see a world where you don't have both their defenders. Like I just don't see I just don't get why you would do it. You're just giving away three points at the back. I feel like you're giving away yeah, because, points. It because I think if you do it, you you've, you've got, got to, to go you've got to say so you've got to go chasing. You've got to do ain't nori. Basically, what you got to do is like Gabriel ain't nori Munoz. And yeah, hope for some jam, and you'll get you'll get two cleans out of those three players and they'll both be Gabriel. <laughs> <laughs> so so you have to so what you have to say is is my player going to score more more than 7 more than 12 points in a double. Yeah. Like that would be that would be my argument. Like if he's not going to score more than 12 points in a double, then I'm not interested. Yeah. Because yeah. Based on the last like 10 games, I I would find it really hard to see anything other than two cleans against Wolves yeah. and Chelsea. Really hard. If you could own, uh, um, I suppose the other way is Liverpool defence. You bring in Liverpool defence, you have a Liverpool defence. So, so one, Ar one Arsenal, so ain't Nori. I can see people would do it because you could go ain't Nori, Virgil, or whichever defender you fancy by that time for Liverpool. Yeah. Um, and Gabriel, and then it opens a spot up, but it still gets tight pretty quickly. Uh, maybe if you went three five two, yeah, maybe three yeah. five two on 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 it would work. Because you'd rather have Havertz, I think, than most strikers in thirty four. Wouldn't you? I think I would. I think you'd go Darwin. Um, you go Darwin, Darwin plus Solanke. <laughs> Darwin, <laughs> Darwin and Solanke would be your two forwards, and then you do have a Saka, Salo, obviously, and then Eze, maybe Eze, Sarabia, yeah, probably something like that. Although, do you think Sarabia is going? I mean, Sarabia is not going to score against Arsenal. You just go like Salah and Diaz. I like I like Diaz. You're like a Salah, Salah, Diaz, and Darwin, and then you you get the double Arsenal defense. <laughs> you get you go Salah, Diaz, Darwin. You go double Arsenal defense and Havertz, and then yeah. you just you just fill the rest. It's it, it's on there, but 
Abbott's is surely the one you want to try and go go out if you're on free hit. I would I would find a way. Um because if nothing else, he gets a quarter of the clean sheet points. Yeah. Nothing else. He does cover a little bit more of the clean sheet. Yeah, he does. Yeah, this is true. This is true. Um but the but upside is just so there for him. They're just for him they're just moment. battering. I mean, this is just another I mean it's just disgusting this kind of this kind of graph. And we're, we're seeing it every everywhere. week. Yeah. Every single week we're going, this is disgusting. <laughs> so my view, I watched this game. Yeah, what a way to spend yourself down. But I watched this game. We had a bit of a bit of family sickness in the in in the house on the weekend. So I was, wasn't doing very much Saturday and I watched this game. And it it felt dull. It felt like Arsenal just dulled this goal game up. That's what it felt like. And the majority of this game came away at the end of it and was like, Arsenal for most of that game were pretty dull in it. But you look at this. I mean, if dull is a 3-0 win away from home where you restrict a team to 0.5 and you get 3.23 XG, then if I'm that fan, sign me up for dull every week because... Not many teams are creating more chances. Not many teams, and no teams are create are, are starving teams of less. They literally feel unstoppable. It's on all on us. It's going to be all on us in thirty six. Yeah, I just want to. I just want to just just share just share a few things. I'm kind of do this on the fly, right? So these are a few of the these are a few of the 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 XG plots we've seen in the last five weeks, right? Excluding the Man City one. Um, and for context, it doesn't include the Brentford one because that was quite close in, in the XG. But all the others, you've got, to start off, we've got Burnley. So this is when they beat Burnley 5-0. And I'm, yep. like, so again, just absolute battering. Moving on from Burnley, we've got Newcastle. Like, same story. Battering. So, Absolutely. So both over, like, two and a half XG versus less than 0.5. Battered. Luton. There's not much here to be honest, but midweek game, they just did enough, yeah. got it done. Right. Um and then and that's why I say where it feels a bit like they're just stifling games up and they're not it feels like they're controlling games, but they turn it up when they need to. Sheffield United. Six nil, <laughs> battered. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um and we're not talking about Brighton. Let's move on to Sunday's games. Uh where do you want to start with Sunday's games? Well, we'll start the first one, Man United, Liverpool. That would be this one, <laughs> which again is, a, is, a, is another is another ridiculous, ridiculous chart because it would actually probably look worse. This chart would look worse if Salah's penalty wasn't there. <laughs> stupid, as stupid as that sounds, because because of, of the scale, that green that green yeah. area would just be a lot higher on the graph, and it would just look even worse. But yeah, two two. Obviously, Liverpool get like three point six xg. United with point seven xg. Um, don't have a single shot. In the first half, as we all, I mean, like everyone was watching this game. We don't need us to tell tell you what happened. But, like, is Darwin a real footballer? Like, is he, <laughs> is he actually a real footballer? Because, uh, honestly, I, d I just don't understand him. Like, he, like, he does, like, one, like, the header for Diaz, the little flick for Diaz is, is good. All right, it's good centre forward play. Get it, get your head on it, move it towards, further towards goal. But everything else he did was awful. It's awkward. It's awkward. Mind you, there was, there was uh, like, it's funny, isn't it? There, there's something about it when we watch Darwin that we see it that we think it's awkward. But Diaz, like, obviously he scores, but he should have, like, how does he put the ball behind Salah for that chance where he should have just put, oh, he, had, he had like 10 yards in front of him. The he pass. Put it and Salah, yeah. Yeah. Puts, but, but we kind of accept a pass behind a little bit more because it doesn't look quite as ugly. He did a similar thing to Diaz, to Darwin, um, on that. And he put him completely on his right foot for that chance near the end. Like, And it's like, good top players nowadays, they look at the foot, they look at the where to do it. And he, he doesn't. I don't feel like Diaz cares about it. I was like, man, I used to do that. Like, he didn't, didn't really care where he was putting the ball. He was like, well, I'll pass it towards it. It's not, your, it's not my fault if, if it was a bit crap. Um, so it, it, it doesn't help him. And then obviously Diaz misses the absolute sitter at the end. Um, but 
for some reason, there's something about Darwin, the way he is, the fact that he's quite cheerful. Like if he was actually more annoyed at the misses, like he like he doesn't ever come across like he's like absolutely gutted that he's just missed something or he's done. You something. do feel, yeah. I think that probably that probably helps him, especially in the ground as well, because you never see him miss a chance, and then the, the fans do a massive cheer, which I think you'd get if he was more animated. I think I agree with that. But, yeah, it's something about we're all on the ride. We're all on the ride to watch the circus. I just, you know, I just don't understand him. Like, and I do think but, it is cringe because I just feel like I it is. He's one of those players where I watch him and the ball goes through, and I'm like, oh my god, he's going to miss again, and I don't really want to watch this. Um, but you know it's going to happen. Yeah, and and yeah. Uh, and I've got him. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I've got him. My team. What do you like? Like, like the, the beauty is when when clock goes. Like somebody else comes in, they're like. <laughs> like, what do you do? What are you? <laughs> what, what are you? Tight space. It's it's really interesting, but um, they're just really dominant in attack. The front three are really good. Sobers lie. I thought Sobers was good as well, and Sobers lie missed some chances, but I also feel like he maybe might have stole a few of the Mac chances that we've seen over the last few weeks. And I did start to wonder if we see more Sobers lie minutes. Do we start to see? max chances dwindle a bit because maybe he's been all over it i mean that 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 i don't want to give him too much of a hard time for that first chance that he had because the save was unbelievable from onana to yeah. be fair like his hand yeah. was just there um but obviously the one straight after it was was pretty poor couldn't get it couldn't get it out of his feet um but i mean the the, the united goals are absolutely sensational yeah, <laughs> yeah. bruno to bruno's to take it as it goes across him like he definitely wants more height on it than what he got on it. Like he, he wants. It's more well than controlled. That. It's what he hasn't. He hasn't just lashed it. Like he hasn't just lashed it. He's. Yeah. Well, if he didn't, if 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 he got it up more, it'd have had less pace on it. It would have spun away. Yeah. Because it was spinning, spinning, spinning. But it was just ridiculous. And then, then Manu's shot is, it's one of those, where, everyone, everyone who's played football enough, like has scored a sort of goal like that where you've got your back to it and you turn and literally the only place you can put it is the top corner. It's like easier to do that than if you were just running onto a ball and put it top corner. It's just, it, it, the it's best one thing, of those natural things where it happens. The best thing about Beautiful. it is he doesn't, he never looks. And when you don't never look, looks. when you don't look, I think you're more likely to hit that corner than if you have a look. Yeah. If you have like, a look, you then try and hit the corner and then you miss. Exactly. But he just That's hits what I'm saying. It's, it's a, really, it's a, it's a I'll, great I'll finish. Back up against it, doing it, and I'm just going to hit yeah, it. And, and you I, know, you know, and it was just, it was He was just away. It was perfect. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame because that would have been a special moment. Like, like if they got away with this and ended up winning 2-1 and he scored that win, and then that's just a... It was, it was magic, annoying because I wanted to be thing. really pissed off at the time. And I just stood there. And you I can't like, be pissed off. When a young <sighs> lad scores at Old Trafford like in, and, and does a goal like that, you're like, you kind of want that to win the game type stuff. Um, Even if it means but, Arsenal win the league? No, we don't want Arsenal win the exactly. league. Exactly. There, there we go. There we go. We just, we just, we just, I'm just bringing you back down to earth. That's all. But outside of that game, mm. I don't know. I don't know. Like, if I'm a Man United fan, I just must look at it. I just, I don't understand. If I'm a Man United, I don't, I still, I can't get my head over the fact that we, we Ten Hag's just allowed to do this every week. I wanted to very quickly, I, I didn't, I haven't prepared any of this, but I'm very, very frantically trying to get the Chelsea, uh, the Chelsea XG plot thing from the, uh, from midweek, just because, you know, we didn't obviously cover the midweek, but it might be worth talking from a Man United perspective, just on, I don't know, just on whether, like, this is just a, it's one of those games, right, that we say that they're playing one of the top teams in the country. So is it as relevant? So you got the Chelsea game midweek. It doesn't matter who they play against. They just they just no, but shipping this is, free XG. This is, they're ship yeah they're shipping they're shipping tons, but they're better attacking wise here. They're still better, but they're they're playing Chelsea who are the worst, it, are the second worst defense in the league. Point taken. <laughs> Point taken. Because our next game you set them up near nicely is to go to uh, Chelsea versus Sheffield United. Yeah. 
when I when Look I when I, saw, when I saw when I when I saw this, I assumed that Chelsea had just been battering them down, and like Sheffield United had just smashed and grabbed it. Because obviously we're watching the Spurs game, right? We're not watching this game when it happens. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm, I see the goal go goals go in. I'm like, yes, that's great. Sheffield United have just managed to snatch one here. But no, like Chelsea did absolutely nothing in the game. Um, 0.37 xg and we capped in palmer for 0.37 xg <laughs> how do we get we got away with we got away with five points like we absolutely yeah. got away with a little tap off and then a run and bang <laughs> yeah absolutely that's absolutely diabolical. but then but then you know that's like they put up i mean <laughs> they put up three xg against man U. Who are who are terrible? Like, <laughs> I'm trying to work out what teams we're supposed to like ignore from from analysis. Are we supposed to ignore certain teams, certain games? Obviously, we we are supposed to ignore single game samples, obviously. But we take notice of 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 this, and we have to start taking notice. You know, a lot of people have got a lot of people have brought in Petrovic, and a lot of people are looking at Petrovic. You know, for thirty-five wild card, I've got no interest in him. We'll see how that changes by thirty. But I have the problem is, how do you wild card and not have a double in keeper? But um, well, at the moment, if I was doubling, if I don't find myself tripping up on Spurs, I'll go Vicario over Petrovic. Um, <laughs> mate, we, least, don't, mate, we keep no clean sheets yeah, like we don't keeper, keep any at least the keeper actually can save a ball <laughs> I mean there is that but we just we don't keep but when any you... clean sheets mate the only reason people have got Tottenham defenders is because there's some kind of attacking output like if you go Vicario do you think... yeah but do you think in 35 just get I... David Raya and just be done with it well <laughs> you say it but but like Anana <laughs> Oh God, this is going to get worse. But Anana at home to Burnley. Oh God, we're going I like back to that. I like that more than I like Chelsea away at Villa and home at Tottenham. Oh, I and, like... and Anana's okay. I don't mind Anana. If Dub, if it turns out that I mean, I'm hopeful somehow Pope comes magically back by 35 because Anana have him, and you'll be like, I just get Pope, mm. and have Pope for the home Sheffield United game. Yeah. And hope that they don't do a Chelsea. Um, but yeah, I can honestly say that I think in the 35, an Anana or whoever the Newcastle defender might be a better keeper in 35 than Petrovic or, or Vicario. But at least, at least with um, Vicario, you've got double, you get one who you can play in 36, and then you've got another home double, and then you've got Sheffield United. But the I, issues where it, it, it seems a waste with Tottenham I, I still spending like one it. of the spots on 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 a keeper. I still don't like it. I'd much rather have. But I just think, a... yeah, I just think <laughs> as this season goes on and this peters out to nothingness, really, in in the league, there's a good chance that Bob Sanchez plays a couple of games. <laughs> Probably, yeah, yeah. There is a chance. I don't see a world in which in that thirty-seven to thirty-eight when they've got three games in a week. I don't see a world that Petrovic plays all three of those games. I mean, we'll have to wait and see. see. I don't think I don't think Potter just change it for the sake of it. I mean, he's not going to change it for for fitness reasons. Like, there's absolutely no reason. He changes to change it, it though because they concede every single game. Yeah, well, that's fair. That's that's fair. But then you just change it, wouldn't you? You just swap. Like Sanchez yeah. was the number one earlier on in the season. He's only really been out because he got injured, wasn't he? And just never really yeah. got back in. Like, I don't think yeah, and then keeps getting little injuries. He was like Chelsea. Chelsea still in the FA Cup? I don't even. Yeah, uh, yeah, they are, aren't they? Yeah. And Sanchez is the keeper for the FA Cup right now. So yeah, like the one competition they're doing well in, Sanchez is the keeper. But maybe <laughs> if he's playing well, you want to keep playing him, make sure he's okay. So yeah. just rolling him out for the cup final. But again, even more reason why you'd play him in 37, you'd be like, I want him to have one game before the cup final. I'm not going to put him back in a box for a month. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Outside of this, Gusto. Gusto. 
as a wait and see, I guess. It's okay, but again, do you think he plays all these games? No idea. I think I think uh, I think you were getting on something just a second ago, saying move on to the next game. Yeah. Second half Spurs, although not really second half Spurs. We just. <laughs> um, how did you find the game, mate? Yeah. So XG is tainted by an own goal. Let's put that in. Yeah. Um, XG is tainted by one of the most ridiculous misses the world's ever seen from Wood. Yeah, I've never, never heard a ball sound like that off a post. That was incredible, wasn't it? The noise, the beauty, the, noise of that. the beauty of that miss was it was about forty-five seconds after Sky put up a visual of his chance conversion this season. Yes, <laughs> did you know? That literally that? made it. Literally made it. They put it up and then he missed that two forty-one chances. percent bang post from a yard. Yeah, they absolutely Incredible. done him, done him an absolute treat. <laughs> um, look, other than that, for this, my takeaways are: is that second half we teams aren't learning that that the time you've got to watch us is forty-five to sixty. It happens all the time. Um, my takeaway: look, it's it's interesting if you watch match of the day. I watch match of the day too um, this morning, and I was. Like, if you've not watched it, it looks like Madison should be sent off. That's what I would say. There's a reason why Madison's not sent off, and it's because of the player that it was up against. You know, is is Yates in the return leg was just the most horrible prick the world's ever seen. And Basuma ends up getting sent off for eventually retaliating on him. He gets away with murder. Because he's Yates. Because he's... A genuinely, you know, genuinely couldn't believe when he got booked, he'd only been booked five times this season. He gets away with it absolutely... I don't understand how like, that's possible. Like some kind of weird baby-faced assassin. Um, Four ridiculous but, fouls in the first 20 minutes. It was like... But he got himself completely caught up in the moment. Like Yates had forgot the game was playing. Like, he didn't touch the ball, basically. All he was doing was trying to fight from minute one because he was like, well, that worked in the that worked in the home game. I'll just do that again. So he was just trying to fight. He was just trying to fight. He was doing whatever he could. Um, the, the audacity of what he decided to do was stay down for the two minutes that that attack was still going on and not get up and try and stop a goal. Was That was, you know, a good testament to how much he wants to shit house. Everybody else in, in world football, like, it, there's no way whatever happened there, and we don't exactly know because you can't really see other than you see. You actually, if you look at it, both hands move to him. So his hand moves to his back as his other hand moves into his stomach. So, like, you can't really exactly say what, what happened in that moment um, other than he definitely, Madison definitely tried to do him. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but he definitely didn't do him to an extent that, he was hurt there's no way on earth Yates was hurt but he was like I'm staying down here to try and push this this agenda even though we're up against it and there's a massive attack going on captain um, as well I'll just add captain <laughs> the ridiculous part is we hit the bar in that attack <clears throat> I am 100% convinced that if that ball goes in the net they would have disallowed it and if they disallow it, I reckon they send Madison off. Mad. Mad. That's the mad stuff, is that they would have done it. Um, but regardless, is is Yates definitely should have been sent off because what you're not allowed to do is do that. I mean, if that doesn't show you what kind of dickhead he is, he literally did that, to Green, which is an immediate book of all offence. Um, so what I do know is one person had to go. I even saw a forest fan saying, no, no, he was saying that to the bench. What well, the bench don't get to appeal. The bench don't get to go, oh, sorry, by the way, could you uh, do one of those appeals? It's not cricket. <laughs> um, um, but he wasn't playing the game. And therefore it was allowing us to dominate in the middle of the pitch whenever we wanted to. Um, what they are really good at, they've got good, good, good quick wingers, good striker. Um, they got done. Um, Van, Van, Van der Ven's strike was a beauty, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, it was just just one that it was one of those that stay hit, right? Like and like it was like the world stood still before it went in the back of the net. Um, mm. Yeah, great I shot. shouted. I audibly shouted. My son looked at me like, <laughs> "What was that noise, Daddy?" <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then and then Pyro pops up, bastard. I, I, Utter disbelief. Utter disbelief of that. When it, I was like... He's actually scored. I, I looked at our WhatsApp chat. We've got our Spurs mates and, and Sparky, one of our mates, is is always somehow ahead. I don't understand his TV's in the future. He's always somehow ahead of everything else. And he was like, keep watching. Okay. And, like, and then, and for, then it, like, for me, I've got, I've got like a sky glass, so it's about two seconds behind. And so like immediately I was like, Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Pyro's actually scored. <laughs> I was just waiting for VAR to chalk it off. I was like, "This has finally happened." Um, amazing. Son, look at my son. Uh, I don't know. He looks a bit lost. He looks a bit lost at the moment. Um, coming into areas of the pitch, he find uh, when I see him coming in to be like the deepest playmaker of the entire yeah. pitch. I'm just like, well, he's just in the wrong place. I, I, he needs to be, he needs to be in, he needs to be the guy that like Werner's crossing to like Werner's doing a lot of good stuff and he needs to just keep doing that good stuff and then stop doing the dickhead stuff that he does. Right. Cause when he yeah. tries to make passes inside, they're just crap. And when he's trying to cross the ball high, it's just crap. When he gets his, when he finds an opportunity to take on the defender and he gets and he gets past him and can deliver that low cross, like so many times he found that gap that went just all the way across the front and beyond yeah. everybody. And you're thinking like, why is Son not just there? Why is he not there? Because I feel like Richarlison would be there. Yeah, I think Weirdly. I think he would occupy that. Sort of, uh, what, what I know it's quite a, t- a lot of times is Johnson was getting down the right and he Johnson had the right to himself at will he was able to get down that right hand side and every single time he did it son went and pulled back for the cutback and johnson never looked never once looked up and played the cutback every time banged it across every time and yeah. and son was getting visibly frustrated that he was not getting picked out um on it so uh, that's the issue with having johnson is that he doesn't look up for his crosses um, he hits them across and Werner does it pretty similar Son's trying to be intelligent and pull off um, I felt like every time that Son got into the box it was normally because Maddo had played it forward but he was sort of playing it forward into channels where he then had to sort of like almost cut back on himself and it was like he was finding himself on the byline like, at the edge of the six yard box type of thing where they just can't strong. do very much with it yeah, not if you're not strong. If you're strong, you can do that and hold someone off while you're doing it. But he then has to get rid of it really quickly. Yeah, the Timo and um, the Timo and Brennan is not good in games where we're going to dominate possession. I think the Timo and Brennan, where it is potentially good, is where the team is going to go at us a bit more. So I actually think for the Newcastle game, that feels like a Sun game. That feels like a Maddo game. That feels like a Sun game where you know use them um, wide and you'll 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 get more from it. Maddo Maddo's just not right. There's something not right, and we desperately need him to be right. There's nothing um, when he gets called pulled off early every game. He just does his nice clap, doesn't he? I want to see him pissed. I think he was last week. I think he was last week. This week he wasn't so much, but I think he was just blowing. I think last week when he came off, he was pissed because he hadn't really contributed. Which game was it? It might have been the Fulham game or something like that. that he just came off. He, just, he was just raging. He I was. I see him raging. Yeah. But he's but not... I almost want him... I, I, I want him to know that it's going to happen because it is going to happen now. We sort of like can almost call it. So, like we were talking and you were like, no, I don't take him off. And I was like, it's coming off. Like that's happening, you know, and stuff. Cause you're, you're yeah. only, but, but because we know it's going to happen. I'm like, do something, make it not happen. Like, yeah. Be, I know what you mean. be the man sitting at the head of the table, eating your bloody roast dinner. Yeah. Um, that's what we're not yeah. seeing from him. Do you know what I mean? Like, even the fact that he's just given corners over to Poro like it's nothing. 
Well, I think corners are a complete waste of time for us anyway, but... Well, we kept doing weird short ones, but Poro took them all. We, we, do, we do weird short ones because all of our players are like five foot ten, apart no, from Mickey Forrest and Romero. Rubbish, it's an, uh, 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 you know, it's a defending set Still. pieces. But yes, Poro did have all the corners. So if you look at any stats, it will say Poro took all the corners. But how many of them did he actually put in the box? And like you say, even if he did, how many of them are actually going to hit anyone? Not many. Yeah. Um, can I ask you a question? Would you this week play Poro away at Newcastle or Gusto at home to Everton? Uh, I would probably play Poro. Yeah. I'd like to sell Poro this week if possible. <laughs> I mean, feel free to. I mean, like, I'm not really championing Spurs, but I just yeah. don't. I'm just, you're just giving me Chelsea as the alternative, so. Yeah, it's a um, tough one, isn't it? You know, it obviously, I'll be having, I'll be keeping Gusto, and I'll be playing him if he's fit. Which I, you know, he's either fit or he's not, probably right. So yeah, <laughs> probably just playing. But you definitely, you're definitely playing your two home uh, Arsenal defenders, home to Villa. In, so, yeah, so. absolutely, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. That's that is that is a given. That is a given. I think we're there. I don't think there was anything else. Oh, you mentioned, um. Did I put it here somewhere? <gasps> there it is. Yeah, you mentioned like teams not learning. And, you know, we've sat there watching Spurs and pretty much said the same thing every single week on WhatsApp to each other and to mates and stuff like that. And we start okay and everything, we, you know, it's relatively positive. And then our 15 minutes, we just go, huh, okay, well, this is now a bit crap. And then if nobody if nobody saw the tweet from Corf, did you see that? I, I sent that in the group. I think no. the tweet from Corf, which is basically like Spurs players every half time, which was uh, which was just basically a guy just loading up on coke, basically like just lining <laughs> up the coke every every Spurs half time team talk. Um, because we just come out and like seventeen goals in that first fifteen minutes, more than any other team after half time, only conceded four, and that is yeah. only bettered by Brighton. Um, who have only conceded three yeah. at that time. So, you know, between 46 Second and 60... Second most amount of goals is Man City on 11. Yeah. And Arsenal and on Arsenal. 11. We scored 17 in that period, 46 to 60. Just battering teams that yeah. period. Um, obviously, the teams that are the good teams to focus on here uh, are obviously like your Man Cities and your like Newcastle in the last 20 minutes of a game. Perfect. Liverpool with the most obscene last 15 minutes you'll ever see 27 goals they've scored in the last um in the last 15 of minutes games. of games plus added time of course and conceded six yeah. goals in that time the, the, the ridiculous part about the 46 to 60 is that is that it's it's an actual 15 minutes because the the last 15 minutes is actually like 22 minutes yes. it includes injury time um, so you'd expect your most prolific time to be at the end of the second half because traditionally second halves have longer amounts of injury time than first halves and um, that's what it is and people are just chasing games and doing all the things for it to actually not only for Liverpool to score so many but to also concede so less actually is a, is a ridiculous thing to do um, yeah. Arsenal for out just to just battering teams every minutes of every game Liverpool are the slow starters yeah you know that's that's really interesting to see Liverpool come out really slowly only two goals all season in the first 15 minutes so only Sheffield United have scored less goals in the first 15 minutes of games than Liverpool this season start slow as hell finish like trains which does make those players so you know, Diaz, for example, what we all watched, he had the get chance at the end. But players like Diaz, who is running like a madman and is going to be on the pitch for 90 minutes, makes him really important. Interesting. Yeah. Um, Interesting. So, so I'll go back to go back to the main screen. Where are we? So we got a super chat. Janaina, um, thank you very much. This evening, you guys think Son is a forward next year? Yeah. You think? Okay. Don't know. Yeah. Price? We're already looking at prices for next year. That's where we're Just, at. That's where we're at. Strike. Son as a striker. <clears throat> I think nine. 
Nine. Nine's fine. Also, back-to-back top tens in your challenge league. Yeah, I saw that. Game week 30 and game week 31. How does the scoring work there? Well, funny you'd ask. So we do. I'm doing basically a uh, like a like a Formula One type design where you get 20 points for finishing first, and then 15, 12, 10, 8, 6, da 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 da. So right now, um, yeah, and you are sitting ninth with 14 points, and you're one of only three people to finish in the top 10 twice in the first three game weeks. Um, that's yourself, Michael Saville is another one. And the third one is me. So, but I've only got, I've only got three points. So you need to win a week really um, to do something because all the guys at the top of all won a, all won a week. Uh, yeah. Um, got a few questions coming in around like, you know, teams and stuff like that. We'll be back end of the week. So what's our, what's our plans this, this rest of this week? Back to normal uh, week, Thursday? Thursday, maybe. Yeah. Might be a little bit later and might have to be a little bit shorter. I need to play. I need to play some golf before before next week. Mm, so Thursday's Thursday's a good day for me to get out and play nine holes. Uh, ordinarily, I would um, I would bring the little one home, and my wife would stay up and uh, and watch the eldest do gymnastics and stuff. But I think I'm going to try and play nine holes and come home later. So we are a football FPL podcast. Yes. But, uh, the we have a golf day next weekend we do and uh this weekend is the masters can't wait oh mate sunday final round coverage starts at half six mate we ain't podding on sunday no chance <laughs> no 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 chance we ain't podding on we sunday will need Master to sunday. Have some kind of meeting about how we are going to uh how we are going to uh progress the podcast over the next week <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll have to we'll have to work it out yeah so well it's get, like the weather's getting better now so we, the more and more we're talking about golf and yeah and so no pod <laughs> maybe a pod on sunday maybe monday and then there's gonna be no pod next thursday because i'm driving down to to uh to newbury and then friday as you say is the golf day we are out in the evening in newbury if you are local to that area Come down and see us. We'll be in walkabout um, from about half six. So just come down and see us. And yep. um, and then we're going to wake up Saturday morning in the hotel and do a deadline stream. <laughs> yep, we're doing it. Why are you smiling like it's okay? <laughs> we're doing it. Okay, we're doing it. We're doing it. We'll have, the, we'll have it we're set up it. in the hotel room. I have to still have to arrange late checkout or something like that, but we'll find out a way to do it and we'll do it. We'll work out. And we'll talk about how good our teams are going to look for the double as you do nothing and I bench boost probably. Oh my God. You're going to bench boost after we've been out. Oh God, it's going to be carnage. And And we like minus 12s and everything. Oh my gosh. Mate, I'm I'm 800, I'm 900k. Like who cares? Our next... Two weeks content is going to be a little shaky. This is what we're saying out now. <laughs> but it's going to be funny. 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 I might see, like, when I'm driving down, when I'm driving down from, um, like, I might just do like a 10 hour space on Twitter. Because I'll just be driving, I'll be on my own, like, driving down to, driving down to England. We could do a Friday night space. Friday night in walkabout. Just, just, I'll just grab the phone out, just live YouTube from oh, Walkabout. God. Are you allowed to heckle? Yeah, heckle where? What? Not, not, not at the golf course. No, no, no. We, we are. We're civilized people. What do yeah, people think we are? On the golf course with, with beers and fireballs and cocktails and stuff. Do, 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 do. <laughs> That's it. We're off. Let's go. Let's go. Right. Thanks very much um, for everyone who is watching. Uh, no idea how many of you are, but however many there are, make sure you drop a like Love on a video all. on the way out and make sure you hit subscribe and we will see you at some point when we see you. See you soon. Cheers, mate.